Hello students, today we will discuss about the anatomy of lungs. In today's lecture, we discuss the gross features and how to identify the side in the, your exam. So, what is about the basic things which you should know about the lung? Now, you know that lung is a paired organ. So, when you will have the lungs, there are right and left lungs and these lungs are situated into the thoracic cavity. Clear? Now, one on either side of the mediastinum enclosed in the pleural sac. Now, the term is the mediastinum. Now, what is the meaning of mediastinum? Mediastinum means the space which is present in the midline in chest cavity between two lungs. Now, in this diagram, if you will see, now this is the border of one lung, this is the border of another lung. In between them, you have a space and that this space is known as mediastinum clear so what is mediastinum mediastinum is a space between the two lungs so this is the one thing second thing is that each lung is enclosed by the pleural sac that you know now each lung is large conical or pyramidal shaped organ and its base resting on the diaphragm and the apex extending into the root of neck now what does it mean now if you will see this part now you can see that this is the base and this is the conical apex and this apex extends into the root of the neck the right lung is larger and heavier and this is the question of your exam sometimes you have this question that what is the approximate weight of the lung so right lung is heavier so it is 700 grams and left lung is around 650 grams in weight now here in these two diagrams you can appreciate the position of both the lungs this i already told you that this is the borders of your two lungs and there are the surfaces now between these two surfaces, here you can see this is the empty space and this empty space in midline between the two lungs is known as mediastinum clear now when you will talk about the newborn, in newborn babies, the color of the lungs is rosy pink. But in adult, it is not rosy pink. The color changes to the brown or black. Now, this is the question why? Answer is because of the inhalation of carbon particles which are present in the atmosphere. Now, in the adult, lungs are spongy in texture. What does it mean? If you will compress the lungs in case of the adult when you will see the dissection in lungs in the dissection hall and if you will compress those lungs you will realize that air bubbles are coming out from the your bronchus so they are spongy and you are able to feel the crepitate sound on touch due to the presence of air in the alveoli now the lungs of adult float in the water now this is the question of your exam now why the adult lung float because of the presence of air inside the lungs but in case of stillborn stillborn matlab if the meaning of stillborn means that if a newborn or infant is uh, coming out or there is a delivery of a dead fetus if there is a delivery of a dead fetus that is known as stillborn infant the lungs are solid what does it means that that baby has no respiration because once we start the respiration the air will go inside the lung and the fluid which is present in the lung alveoli at the time of birth start to replace and the air will set into the alveoli but because this baby born dead so what will happen there is no more air inside the lung lungs are full of fluid and that's why we are using the word they are solid and because there is no air so you don't have any crepitate sound and because of the absence of air these type of the lung will not float so what will happen these will sink in the water so this is a medical legal importance it is a very commonly asked question in your exam how to check the uh, baby that the baby is stillborn or live born because if the baby is live born 
then he always have the respiration and always the air is present. But if it is a stillborn baby, the lungs are full of water, there is no air and that's why it will sink in the water. Now, what are the external feature or presenting part of a lung? So when you will see, there are apex, base, borders and surfaces of the lung. Now you know that when you are talking about a pyramid, you always have a apex and the base of the pyramid. And here in the lung, you will find the three border, anterior border, posterior border and inferior border. And we have the two surfaces. One is the costal surface, which is a larger surface and the medial surface of the lung. So in this diagram, you can see that this is the apex of the lung. This is the base of the lung. Now we'll see the three borders. This is the one which you are able to see. This is the anterior one. Now here will be the inferior border, which is present here on the lower part. Then you have the posterior border. You have the costal surface. Costal means something pertaining to the rib. So the surface which is in the touch, in the contact of the ribs is known as costal surface. And the surface which is facing towards the midline is medial surface. Now in this section, this is a transverse section of the thorax. Now in this section, you can see that this is the sharp anterior border, which you can see clearly in both the lungs. And this is the broad round posterior border. Clear? Second thing is, you can see that this hole is your surface, which is in contact with the ribs. So that is costal surface. And this surface is facing towards the midline. And this is your medial surface. Clear? So medial surface is here. The larger costal surface is laterally, the anterior border is sharp, posterior border is round. Now, how to do the side determination in exam? So first, you have to keep the conical end or apex in upward direction because it is a pyramid with the apex directed upward. So you have to keep this conical end in the upward direction. The broader base is directed downward. So this is the broader base. The convex surface or costal surface. Now this is the important thing to keep in mind that when you will see this diagram, you can see that this is the convex surface and this is the concave surface. So convex surface is the outer surface, which is your costal surface. So the convex surface or the costal surface is outward and it comes in contact with the rib cage. The medial surface is facing medially and on the medial side, you are having a depression or a area is known as hilum, which is directed inward. Its thin margin is anterior border, so it should face forward. Now, this is very important to keep in mind that if you see the lung, you will find this is your sharp anterior border. Now, this sharp anterior border of the lung is always facing forward. Cardiac notch, if present, it is a feature of left side lung. This is the most important question of your exam. How to differentiate right and left lung? Now you can see that the anterior border of the right is vertical, but on the left side, you can see the turn here. And this turn is known as cardiac notch. And this cardiac notch is a characteristic feature of left side lung. Clear? The posterior border is round and should be faced backward that I already told you. And the right lung has three lobes, left lung is having two lobes. So this is also the important thing to identify the side. So you can see there, there are two fissures in the right. So you will have three lobes. And here you have only one fissure. So you will have two lobes in the left side. So whenever you are having the lungs in your exam, you have to basically differentiate right and left and the most important thing which you have to keep in mind, cardiac notch, which is a feature of anterior border of left lung. Now what about the important thing about the apex? Now when you will have this short note in exam, the apex is a rounded blunt superior and it lies above the impression of first rib. Now this is again the important thing, when you will have the embalmed specimen in your dissection hall, you will see that there are number of ribs impression present on the lung because that is a costal surface which is in contact with the rib cage. 
Now when you will see the first rib, now here you can see this is the first rib, this is the anterior end which is making a joint with the sternum and this is the uh, posterior round end which is making a joint with your vertebral column. Now here you can see that this anterior end is lower and posterior end is higher. Why? Because of the oblique placement. Clear? So when there is an oblique placement of the first rib, you will realize that anterior end is lower and posterior end is higher. But the apex is defined that area which is above the impression of first rib. So the impression is oblique. When you will see the dry uh, lungs in your dissection hall, when you will see the embalmed specimen, you will realize that there is an oblique impression. Now this impression of the first rib define the lower limit of your apex. So this part is known as apex of the lung. Now it extends into the root of the neck. The summit lies 3 cm superior to the anterior end of the first rib and 2.5 cm above the medial end of the clavicle. Now what is the meaning of this line? Now you have to keep one thing in mind here that we are always ta talking in terms of your anterior end of your uh, ribs, not the posterior end of the first rib. Now here if you will see, now this is the anterior end of first rib. So it is 3 cm superior to anterior end. So this distance is 3 cm. But if you will have the, your clavicle here, then this is somewhere around 2.5 cm from the clavicle. Clear? So here the important thing is that the height or summit of this apex is not going behind, beyond this posterior limit. Now this is again the question to understand. It is uh, so many times you have the multiple choice that the apex of the lung is higher than anterior end of the first rib or posterior end of the first rib. So you have to keep in mind it is at the same level with the posterior end. It is higher than the anterior end of the first rib. You can see the height is measuring from the anterior end not from the posterior end. It does not extend above the neck of first rib. Neck of first rib is a part of posterior end of your first rib. It is covered by the cervical pleura and suprapleural membrane. This is again the important thing that this part of the lung is covered by the pleura and the pleura which is present here is known as cervical pleura and outside the cervical pleura you have one more layer is known as suprapleural membrane. All the structures related to the apex are superficial to the suprapleural membrane that means they lies outside the suprapleural membrane. For example, suppose here you have the subclavian artery. So subclavian artery lies between the lung and your these two layer. So, when you are having the any structures which are related to the apex, they lies outside the suprapleural membrane. Clear? Now here in these two diagram, you can see that this is the anterior view. You can see sternum is here and this is the posterior view where you can see the spines of your vertebral column. Now the important thing to again re realize here that this is the posterior end of your first rib. This is the anterior end of your first rib. Now in both the diagrams you can see that this apex or the summit of the apex is above the anterior end but it is at the same level of the posterior end or you can say neck of the first rib. So it is not extending in this area but it is extending above the first rib anterior end. Clear? Now, when you will see the inferior view of the lung or the superior view of the lung, you have to keep this thing in mind that you are, you have to identify the side, you have to look for the apex, you have to look for the different borders and the base. Now in this diagram, you can see that this is the apex and this is the impression of first rib. Now this is the impression formed by the first rib here which is the anterior end and that's why you can see the part is above the first impression. 
Now this is the anterior border which is a sharp border that will continue with the sharp inferior border. Now in this superior view you can see that this is the notch which is visible here. So this will become the left side lung, this will become the right side lung and these are the two apex and this area is known as mediastinal area. Clear? Now what are the relations? Now when you will see the relations of apex, first we will discuss the anterior relation. Now anteriorly you will have the subclavian artery, origin of internal thoracic from the subclavian and insertion of scalenius anterior. Now here in this diagram you can see that this is your arch of aorta. Now from the arch you are having the three branches. Now on the right you will have the brachiocephalic and on the left you have left subclavian. Now this left subclavian is on the relation of medial side and then it is coming on the anterior aspect of the apex then it will come on the first rib. You know that there is a groove on the first rib that is the groove for the subclavian artery. So this is the area where you are having the relation of subclavian artery on the anterior side. At the same point it is giving origin of this internal thoracic artery and you know that internal thoracic artery runs in uh, along the anterior chest wall on both the side of the sternum. So this is the origin part which is again in the anterior relation of the apex that is above the first rib anterior end of first rib. Now where is the insertion of scalenius anterior? Now if you will see this diagram you can see that this is the scalenius anterior which is inserting on the scalenial tubercle that will be here on the inner margin of first rib. So this is actually covering here. Now this portion lower portion near the insertion is covering the anterior part of apex. Clear? So what will you realize that subclavian artery grooves the apex at two places medial side and the front. Why medial side? Because it is starting from the medially and then it is coming on the anterior aspect and ultimately it will come into the axilla. So you have to keep this thing in mind that anterior relations are subclavian artery, internal thoracic and insertion of scalenius uh, anterior which is here. Then what are the posterior relations? Now the posterior relations are very important because these in, there is an involvement of sympathetic chain will lead to the Horner syndrome if there is a tumor of the apex. Now what are the important structures you know present in front of the neck of first rib? These all are considered as a posterior relation of the apex. So what are they? So if you will go from medial to lateral there is a sympathetic chain, first posterior intercostal vein, superior intercostal artery and ventral rami of first thoracic nerve. Now in this diagram you can see that this is your first rib, clear? Now here this area we are talking about this space, now this space is behind the apex but in front of the first part of your rib. Now in this area if you will see the relations, what are the relations here? So first structure is we are talking about is your sympathetic chain. So here you can see that this yellow color structure is the sympathetic chain which you know that it is paravertebral in location. So the sympathetic chain is the medial most structure. Now just lateral to this you will have a blue color area is here, this is your vein. Just laterally you will have the artery. Now this is your superior intercostal artery. Now you can see this artery is basically arising from here, that is the subclavian artery from where you have the costo cervical, costo cervical and costo thoracic trunk. Now from this trunk, now this artery is going posteriorly and it will come in contact with the neck of first rib, clear? So this is, these are the three structure, first is the sympathetic trunk, second is the vein, third is the artery and fourth will come here is your T1 ventral rami of first thoracic nerve. Now this is the important area which you have to keep in mind where you can see the presence of sympathetic chain in front of your first rib and this area if compressed will lead to the Horner syndrome. Now what are the medial relation of the apex? 
the right lung is having the right brachiocephalic vein, the brachiocephalic trunk, right pericardiophrenic vessels, right phrenic nerve and trachea. Now when you will see these relations in this diagram, you will realize that this is your right lung. This is your right lung. Now on the right side, there is a brachiocephalic vein, clear? In the same way, you have the left brachiocephalic vein which is going on the left. So the left and right brachiocephalic vein will join to form your superior vena cava. So here the important thing is that anterior most relation is your brachiocephalic vein. Now behind this brachiocephalic vein, you have brachiocephalic trunk on the right side. Because you know arch of aorta will give three branches, brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid and left subclavian. So this brachiocephalic trunk which arising from the arch will take a turn towards the right side and then it will further divide into the right subclavian and right common carotid. So a hair in, in this medial part of the lung near the apex, what you are able to appreciate? In this area you are able to appreciate this right brachiocephalic vein. Behind that you are able to appreciate the brachiocephalic trunk. Then you have the right pericardiophrenic vessels. Now these pericardiophrenic vessels are arising and going downwards and they are again related on the medial side itself. Clear? Then the next one is right phrenic nerve. Now right phrenic nerve is also going downward in this area that we will discuss in the coming slides and trachea. Now what is the important thing about the trachea? That trachea is not a midline structure. It is having a slightly right shift and because of the slightly right shift of this trachea, it will come in contact with the right side lung, not with the left side lung. So in these two diagrams, if you will see the phrenic now particularly, here you can see that this is the phrenic now. This phrenic nerve is going downward. Now this is the medial side of the lung which you are able to see on the right side. Now on this right lung, you are having this brachiocephalic vein and behind that you will have this brachiocephalic trunk which is on the right side and this is your phrenic nerve. Now this is the phrenic nerve which is coming downward. Now how to identify the phrenic nerve? Now this is again the question of your exam because there are two nerves which are very commonly asked phrenic nerve and vagus now. So how to differentiate? So the only answer is that phrenic now lies anterior to the root of lung. Now here you can see it is coming on the anterior side. Now if you will see the inferior view of both the lungs, you can see that these are the hilum of right and left lung and you can see the nerve is lies on anterior side. This is the sharp anterior border, clear? So this is the nerve which is on anterior side of the hilum. So my dear students, you have to keep this thing in mind that in exam, if you have to differentiate the phrenic nerve from the vagus, how to identify that phrenic nerve lies anterior to the root and vagus nerve goes posterior to the root, clear? Then what are the medial relation of the apex of the left lung? But obviously the few things are very common like left brachiocephalic vein, which I told you that the left vein is going on coming from the left side. So it is again become an anterior structure. But behind this, you don't have brachiocephalic trunk on the left. You have left subclavian artery. That's why I told you that left subclavian artery grooves the two places. One is on the medial side and then we have seen on the anterior relation. Apart from that, it is having the relation with the esophagus while the right is having the relation with trachea. Now this is again the important relation is thoracic duct. Now what is thoracic duct? Thoracic duct is a part of lymphatic system. Now here you can see that this is the thoracic duct which is starting from your abdomen. Then it is running in the posterior mediastinum on the posterior wall. But you can see that it is not remain on the midline but it ultimately comes out on the left side. And along the left lung above the uh, near the apex, it is taking turn and it ultimately open into the your left side of venous system. So here you can see this is the relation of the thoracic duct, clear? So thoracic duct is going to open into the left side of your brachiocephalic vein and internal jugular vein, not on the right side. 
and when it is going to open it is present on the posterior mediastinum and ultimately it is going to make it turn anteriorly clear now there is one more question related to this uh, uh, thoracic duct that is that this duct is important because it is carrying the lymph of your posterior abdominal wall as well as it is carrying the nutrients which has been absorbed in the intestine through the lacteals which are the lymphatic ducts now what about the base the base is semi lunar the base is semi lunar in shape it is concave it rests on the dome of the diaphragm so you know that this concavity lies on your diaphragm and that's why this is known as diaphragmatic surface and this concavity is more on the right side why more on the right side because you see you can appreciate the large lever is present so because of this large organ present below the right lung the concavity is very high on the right side so the lung is separated from the right lobe of the liver by the right dome in the right side while on the left side it is separated from the spleen and fundus of your stomach by the left dome of the diaphragm so here you can see this is your lesser curvature this is your greater curvature of the stomach and this will be the fundus and here is you can see the presence of spleen so these are the two organs which are separated from the left lung by the left dome while the liver is remain separated from the right lung by the right dome of diaphragm now what about the borders so i told you that anterior posterior and inferior there are three border anterior border is thin shorter and the posterior border is shorter as compared to the anterior border and posterior border is rounded that i have already explained now what are the characteristic feature of the anterior border of left lung the first and important thing is cardiac notch so what is cardiac notch that at the label of fourth costal cartilage now this is again the question of your exam when you will see this turn now this turn starts at the level of fourth costal cartilage so this is the question that below the level of fourth costal cartilage there is a presence of cardiac notch which this area is occupied by the heart and pericardium so you can see that the heart is visible through this cardiac notch now in this reason there is no covering of the lung on the heart and the pericardium hence the reason is responsible for the superficial cardiac dullness what does it mean when you will do the percussion on the lungs the sound is different but when you are percussing on this area you will find that lung is not there so the sound is become dull below the cardiac notch there is a presence of tongue shape projection is known as lingula now what is lingula now this process is known as lingula so this is again the question of your exam lingula is a feature of which lung answer is left lung clear so in this diagram it is very clear that there is a presence of cardiac notch cardiac notch is a area where the lung is absent and your heart is direct contact in with the anterior chest wall and that's why you are having the dullness that is known as cardiac dullness on the percussion and there is a small projection is known as lingula which is a part of left lung now when you see the posterior border posterior border we know that it is shorter and it is round and the important thing is it extends from the spine of c7 to t10 now here this is the posterior view so you can see that this is the posterior border and these are the vertebras so which vertebras are corresponding to the posterior border in this length answer is c7 to t10 spine clear now inferior border i told you it is again present on the lower surface and this inferior border separates the base from the costal and medial surfaces so what about the surfaces first is the costal surface which is larger and medial surface and this medial surface is further divided into the two part anterior and posterior now this is the medial surface where you can see this is the hilum that is the where you have the root now this whole posterior surf, uh, medial surface is divided into the two part one is the anterior surface this is known as mediastinal and this one surface which is parallel to the vertebral column is known as vertebral surface so what is the important things you should know about the costal surface costal surface is large is smooth and convex clear 
that I already told you why it convex because it is following the curvature of your rib cage. It is covered by the costal pleura and endothoracic fascia. Now, what are the relations? So, it is related to the lateral thoracic wall and in embal body, you are able to appreciate the number of impressions and that impressions are formed by the ribs. So, which ribs come in contact with this costal surface? So, these are the three important lines which is, is again the question of your exam. When you will have the mid clavicular line, now what is mid clavicular line? Now, here is the presence of your clavicle. So, this is the middle point of the clavicle and if you will draw a line, this is known as mid clavicular line. Now, in this mid clavicular line, upper six ribs, upper six ribs are related. Then you will have upper eight ribs in mid axillary line. Now, mid axillary line means this line of stitching is known as mid axillary line where you have the relation with eight ribs. Then posteriorly, you will draw a line which is passing through the inferior angle of the scapula that is known as scapular line where you are having the relation with 10th rib. So, what is the relation? 6, 8 and 10. Clear? 6 in the mid clavicular, 8 in mid axillary and 10 is in the scapular line. Now, here you can see that if the scapula will come here, then this will become the posteriorly scapular line. This will become mid clavicular line and here this is your side in the sides you have axillary line. Now, what is about the medial surface? Medial surface, I told you divided into the two parts. Posteriorly, you have the vertebral and anteriorly, you have the mediastinal part. So, what are the relations of the vertebral part? Vertebral part is flat and they are related with the upper 10 thoracic vertebral bodies. Now, here you can see that these are the vertebral bodies and this is your posteriorly placed vertebral part. Now, this basically, this is your vertebral part and in this vertebral part, if you will erase this remaining area, now here you can see that this vertebral part is in contact with these vertebral bodies. You are seeing from the inferior side, this is the section and you are seeing from the below. So, you can, you can appreciate the vertebral bodies are in contact with the uh, area. Apart from that, you have posterior intercostal arteries. Now, this is your aorta, thoracic aorta. You know that from the aorta, you are having these arteries which are coming out and going on both the side of intercostal space. So, when they are passing through this area like this, they come in contact with the vertebral part of the lungs. And lastly, and very important is splanchnic nerve. Now, this concept, first you have to understand that splanchnic nerves are always medial branch of your sympathetic trunk. They are medial branch. That means you can see from the inferior view, these, this is the sympathetic trunk and these are the medial branches. So, the medial branches will go like this. Clear? So, from these ganglias, the medial branches are arising. Now, you know that the ganglias are present in a paravertebral location and this paravertebral area is in contact with this vertebral part of the lung. So, that is why these branches which are known as splanchnic nerves are in contact with the your vertebral surface or medial posterior surface. They are not in contact with the mediastinal surface. They are not in contact with the costal surface. This is the very important question for your exam because the students think that the splanchnic nerve will go like this. It is not like that. If the splanchnic nerve will arise from the sympathetic chain and if they will have the lateral course, then they will come in contact with the costal surface. But what I told you, the nerves are not having this course, these splanchnic nerves will go towards the midline and they are having the medial placement. They will go like this. These are the splanchnic nerve. So, these are the medial branches of the sympathetic trunk. That is why they will come in contact with the medial uh, surface particularly vertebral part of your uh, lungs. So, here also you can see the placement. So, this is the placement of sympathetic chain and this is the placement of your thoracic part of the aorta. Now, from aorta you can see these are the arteries which are taking origin here and when you will keep your lung here, if you will put the lung here, you will realize that this part which is known as 
posterior vertebral part of the lung is coming in contact with the origin of these posterior intercostal arteries. Now what about the mediastinal surface, mediastinal part present a hilum. It is related to the mediastinal structure such as heart, great vessels and nerves. I told you what is mediastinum, that is a space present between the two lungs where you have these structures. The relations of the mediastinal surface of two lungs are different. Why different? Because the structure forming the right and left surfaces of mediastinum are different. But obviously on the right side you will have the right atrium, on the left side you will have the left ventricle. So because the structures are different, the relations with the mediastinal surface are also different. So what do you mean by the hilum? Now this is again the question of your exam, define the hilum or what is the difference between the hilum of lung and root of the lung. So these are the two different terms. So hilum is a non-plural impression or a area. What is hilum? Hilum is not a structure. Hilum is a area or a impression. Through this, through this area, the structures enter or leave the lung. And these structures are known as root. Clear? So what is root? Root is formed by the structures. So these structures are root. And what is hilum? Hilum is an area. So root enters into the lung through the hilum. Clear? So root means the structures and hilum means the area. And this area is not covered by the pleura. Now in this diagram you can see that this is the margin of your pleura that is covering the lung that is visceral pleura. Now you can see that there is a triangular area. Now this triangular area which is not covered by the pleura is known as hilum. And through this hilum these structures are coming or uh, entering inside the lung. These will form the root. So the hilum represent the lateral end of the tubular lung root and its margin continue below with a double sheath and this is known as pulmonary ligament. Now this is again the question. Now what is pulmonary ligament? So pulmonary ligament is nothing but it is a downward extension of this tube which is present on the margins of the hilum and this by or double layer structure is known as pulmonary ligament. Now this pulmonary ligament is containing the fatty tissue or the adipose tissue, some lymph nodes, lymphatics and sometimes accessory bronchial artery. And this is actually a dead space which provide the dilatation of the pulmonary vein at the time of increased venous return. What does it mean? You can see that this is the vein is present here which is actually the pulmonary vein and we are having the pulmonary vein red here, not blue. Generally we draw the veins blue but the pulmonary veins are red because they are carrying the oxygenated blood. So when these you are having the excessive venous return, you need the space to dilate and that time this dead space is provided. Clear? Now what do you mean by the root? I told you root is formed by the structures. So what are the structures? So structures you know like bronchus, like pulmonary trunk. So the root of lung is a short broad pedicle which connects the medial surface of lung with the mediastinal areas and it is formed by the structures. Clear? And hilum is a area. So the root of the lung and this is again the question at what vertebral level you will lie, you will have the root answer is T5, T6 and T7 thoracic vertebral level. So if you will see this vertebral level what it comes it is T5 to T7 thoracic vertebra. Now here you can see that this is your hilum. And in this hilum you can see the structures and these structures all combinedly known as root of the lung. Now what are the components of the root? So in the uh, root you will have the principal bronchus but here the question comes is that on the left side you have only single but on the right side you will have the two bronchus which are known as superior or aparterial, inferior or high arterial bronchus. Pulmonary arteries which are one on each side. Pulmonary veins, you know, they are two in each side. That's why the four pulmonary veins open into the left atrium. You have the bronchial arteries, one on right and two on the left. You have bronchial veins, lymphatics, lymph nodes and pulmonary plexus. Clear? 
but the important question comes is here that right side you have the two bronchus superior inferior or ap arterial hyp arterial and on the left, left side you have only one principal bronchus in the same way the bronchial artery one on the left right sorry and two on the left then what is the arrangement now this is again the question of your exam write down the arrangement of the structures in the root so first is from before backward before backward means from anterior to posterior so when you will see the anterior to posterior you will have the sequence vein artery bronchus now what is this vein artery bronchus so this is the pulmonary vein then you will have the artery that is pulmonary trunk branch and bronchus so here you can see this is the vein artery and bronchus clear but this is your superior pulmonary vein we are not considering this inferior vein here when you are writing this anterior to posterior relation so what is the relation vein artery and bronchus clear now this relation is common in both but the left principal bronchus on the left side and ap arterial hyp arterial bronchus on the right side so irrespective to that if you will have to keep in mind what is the sequence of the structure that is vein artery bronchus so this is from anterior to posterior now what is from above downward now when you will see above downward here suppose this is your hilum which i told you this is the area or a depressed or impressed area now in this hilum you are having on the right side four structure but on the left side three structure from above downward one is from anterior to posterior now we are talking from above downward now from above downward the sequence is on the right side bronchus artery bronchus vein what is that bronchus artery bronchus vein so here we i am drawing bronchus artery bronchus vein so what is this superior bronchus or ap arterial bronchus pulmonary artery hyp arterial bronchus or inferior bronchus and inferior pulmonary vein so the answer is bronchus artery bronchus vein but they are not present in one line they are present randomly here and there but when you will draw the planes you will realize the sequence is on the basis of the planes clear so on the right side if i am drawing here it is bronchus artery bronchus vein but here we are not considering superior vein here we are considering inferior vein but suppose this is the left lung in the left lung you have to do only one thing that you have only one bronchus on the left side so we'll remove this one so what will be the sequence now artery bronchus vein clear so on the left side you have artery bronchus vein on the right side you have bronchus artery bronchus vein so these are the two question from anterior to posterior you have vein artery bronchus from above downward bronchus artery bronchus vein but on the left side there is a single bronchus so answer is artery bronchus vein so here you can see this is the arrangement of the structure that is the very important question for your exam anterior posterior and above downward relations so what are the relations now on the root now when you will see the root all around the root you are having some mediastinal structures so anteriorly you have phrenic now i told you the question comes always with the phrenic and vagus so you will realize that vagus is always in the posterior relation vagus is a posterior relation while phrenic is a anterior relation of the root apart from that you have the superior vena cava on the right side now this is again the question of your exam that superior vena cava make a impression on right lung or left lung answer is on the right lung posteriorly you have the vagus now you have the posterior pulmonary plexus but again the question is here descending thoracic aorta it is making an impression only on the left side of your posterior relation of the left lung superiorly now this is again the question because on the superior relation you are having different structure on both right and left on the right side you are having the azygous vein that is forming the arch while on the left side you are having the arch of aorta on left side that will discuss in the coming slides and inferiorly on both the side you have pulmonary ligament now here one by one if you will see this diagram in this diagram you can see this is the left lung now in this left lung this is the anterior placement of the nerve 
Now what is this now? Phrenic now. This is our right. Now in this right again you can see the anterior placement of the now. This is again phrenic now. So anterior placement of the now is phrenic now. Apart from that here you can see this is the long now which is entering and it is going behind this bronchus. That means it is going behind the root and I told you the now which is going behind is vagus. So this is the posterior relation of the root. So anterior relation is phrenic now, posterior relation is vagus now. So if you will have this diagram in exam and you have to identify this relation then it has to be the vagus because it is going behind the root. Apart from that this is the medial surface of your right lung. Why right? Because this is a straight anterior border and it is you are seeing the mediastinal surface. Now here you can see that this is the formation of superior vena cava which is forming towards the right side of your midline that's why superior vena cava creates an impression here. Now along with that you can see this is the your vagus which is going posteriorly. Now here in this diagram this is again the most important question in your exam that which structure make a arch above the right lung root. So this is the right lung root area and you can see this is the structure making a arch. Now this structure is nothing but it is a azygous vein. Now this is the left lung. Why left lung? Because you are having the cardiac notch here. Now you know that there is an origin of the ascending arch. Now this ascending arch make a loop of arch and then this loop will convert into the descending arch. Now this is the descending arch which you can see here. Now this descending arch is going downward but dear students you have to keep in mind that this is not a midline structure. It is going downward after taking a turn. Now it is not going like this straight. It is going towards the left side. So because of this reason this is going to make an impression on the left lung. So what is the difference? Above the root of left lung you have the arch of aorta and above the root of right lung you have azygous vein. In the same way behind you also having the impression of this thoracic aorta on the left lung which is not present on the right because you can see that the aorta is going towards the left not in the straight midline. Clear? So this is what you have to keep in mind. So at the end of this class now you are able to understand what are the basic difference between the right and left lung, how to de uh, determine the side in the exam, what is the arrangement of the structure in the roots, what is the difference between the root and hilum and what are the relations of the roots of right and left lung. So this is all for today's class. Thank you.